Well, good evening, folks. Thank you for joining with us for our gospel service this evening, which is uh, a 245 service. And uh, we're thankful to have the men from Blessed Assurance with us uh, singing this evening. And thank you, Andy, for closing those blinds. Um, they say great minds think alike, and I'm so glad that you were thinking as I was thinking there uh, to, to get the, the light out of um, the eyes. Well, we're going to make a little start. Uh, we've got quite a full program tonight, and we're going to sing. And uh, our opening hymn um, this evening is 207 in Songs of Victory. 207, Jesus, Prince, and Savior. 207, if you're using the hymn book, otherwise uh, the words will be projected above my head. And we'll stand to sing, please. Before we do, just uh, to prepare everyone <coughs> immediately after I pray this evening, uh, I'm going to ask the men from Blessed Assurance to come and uh, to share their, two feet, their first two pieces in song. And it is great to have them here with us on Easter Sunday evening. And uh, as I've been saying, uh, we've heard them before here and uh, in the trailer there last summer. And we really did very much enjoy uh, their ministry. Then after they sing, I'm going to ask Jay, are you okay, Jay? You up for this? Good stuff. Well, then Jay's going to come and uh, he's going to recite uh, Psalm 23 um, from memory. Uh, I'm going to have my Bible open. I'm going to have Psalm 23 in front of me uh, just to give him a wee prompt if I have to, uh, just in case I get it wrong. Uh, but I, I'm fairly confident that he won't. So we're going to pray and then, man, come ahead and sing your first two pieces. 
Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you again, Lord, for this glorious day, this wonderful day, in which our Savior rose again from the dead, even as he said he would. Indeed, we thank you, Lord, that uh, he burst the, 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 the bands asunder, that death and uh, the grave could not hold him. Indeed, we thank you, Lord, that uh, he appeared unto his disciples. Indeed, uh, he appeared unto them and convinced them even with many infallible proofs. And uh, Lord, we are thankful uh, that because uh, he rose again those who, uh, whom he had called, those who had been with him, Lord, all those years, uh, Lord, those who, who because of his arrest and crucifixion, uh, Lord, hid behind uh, closed doors when they saw the risen Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Lord, there was courage put into their souls. Uh, Lord, they had a message to proclaim. Uh, Lord, they were confident of it. And then, Lord, we know a matter of days after uh, that, Lord, you give them the power to do the same. And Father, we pray that in this place tonight, we might know something of the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. Lord, in our singing, Lord, in this ministry and song, uh, Lord, even in the preaching of the gospel. Indeed, we pray that we might know that Christ is with us, uh, that you are here, Lord, uh, and that you are, uh, you've come in order to reveal yourself, in order to make yourself known to man and woman, to, to save. Indeed, we are thankful this evening that our Savior who came to seek and to save is still seeking to save sinners today. So, Lord, undertake for your servants as they would share in song. Help Jay as he comes to recite, Lord, this psalm. And, of course, Lord, I do pray for your help as well as I would turn to your word in a little while and would seek, Lord, to speak from it, to share from it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, blessed assurance. Good uh, evening, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here again tonight. I just thank the pastor, the pastor for the kind words of welcome along. And just trust and pray that God will bless the pieces that we're going to sing for you. And that indeed you will know make the best of from God even tonight. And um, God to have a God running back with this. He's going to do a soul of this first piece for us. And um, since we're last talking to you, we've been in the sick bay. And um, God only has been very seriously ill. He was. Um, in fact, his good wife and family were sent for at one point, and we thought it wasn't going to make it, but the Lord has touched him and brought him back again, and he's rejoicing in his Savior. So he's a wee bit weak still, so if we have to try and make it the end of the meeting, he scratches. But we trust he'll stay and speak to them, so we will. This first piece is simply called Nail It to the Cross. <laughs>
just dealt with and it was forgiven and made ready for heaven and for home. This next piece would be the sounds of peace. Then came the morning. Bible says in Psalm 23, verse 1 to 6, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. 
He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow and death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me through all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He was complaining about another Easter egg. <laughs> Jay, thank you. Uh, so, first of all, thank you to uh, Blessed Assurance. You're going to share again in song in a moment or two. And uh, thank you to Jay. And uh, just uh, <clears throat> the last number of weeks in Lifeliners, uh, we've been learning Psalm 23. And uh, say, Jay was one of, I think, five, if memory serves me right. And I think the other one of them is sitting beside him there, Oscar. Um, I think he said it that night as well, but I wasn't, I didn't pry, I didn't know he was going to be here tonight, uh, to prime him, so maybe if I had known that, he could have, uh, recited it as well. Um, but, uh, it's lovely to hear, uh, young people being able to recite God's Word, and, uh, as I've said, uh, last week, and even there again this morning. Uh, we know parts of Psalm 23. Some of us might be able to give it a good go, but I wonder, could we do it just as well as Jay did there this evening? So uh, again, uh, well done, Jay, and uh, enjoy another Easter egg. Okay. 211. Uh, I think I parked my brain at home there this afternoon. Uh, 211. I uh, will stand to sing, uh, fairest of all the earth beside. And immediately after we sing uh, this hymn, uh, our men are going to come again and uh, share in song, and then we're going to turn to God's word immediately after that. 211, standing to sing, please. Thank you. 
brain and everything else. So, we haven't lost our marbles. When you hear this tune, you will recognize it. But listen to the words. Just, as the tune sometimes you hear, sometimes you hear the tune at a different season, and when you hear it, you will recognize it. But listen to the words. Especially, very applicable at the season where celebrating. And it's entitled for all that you have done for me. I will fear no evil, 
for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff that comfort me. And you know, folks, if there's anyone here tonight without the Lord, please don't leave without me. Mm. I'm so glad I'm a saved man. And whether he's going to let me go home to Lauren or not, I can never come home to be with him. Mm -hmm. And that's the most important thing to me, to be with the Lord. And the reason we have our confidence is because we can say with assurance, it is finished. The battle is over. Oh, mm -hmm. 
Amen. Amen to that. It is finished, folks. It is indeed. Uh, thank you for your ministry tonight. Um, we sang that particular piece, that last piece, as a college, uh, as a choir, sorry, at uh, the Faith Mission Bible College. And uh, I loved it, loved singing it, and loved hearing it tonight as well. And it is finished. There's no more that you can do. What Jesus did on the cross was sufficient. It was enough uh, to save you from your sins. And uh, I hope that I might be able to share something with you this evening uh, in the time that remains from God's Word that will maybe highlight some of that, certainly uh, what they were singing in the piece prior to that, what he has done for you. If you have your Bibles, we're going to turn to Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter 27. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 27, and we're just going to read a few, well, we're going to read a question. We're going to read a question, uh, just for the sake of time. Matthew chapter 27 and verse 22. Always helps if you've got the right page yourself, doesn't it? Matthew 27 and verse uh, 22. And Pilate is speaking here. And he says, What shall I do then with Jesus which... Or who is called Christ? What shall I do then with Jesus, which or who is called Christ? Let's bow together in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we want to thank you again uh, for our time together this evening, for these wonderful pieces uh, in song. Uh, Lord, we thank you for your servants and uh, Lord, we do pray that they will have been blessed in their own soul as they have sought to serve you in this way, uh, Lord, even in this meeting this evening. Remember Jay again, and Lord, we thank you uh, for uh, his ability to remember and to recite uh, Scripture, and not just Jay, but we think of Oscar here, uh, and others, Lord, over the course of this past year, uh, who, Lord, have sought to memorize your words. And Lord, we do pray that your word will be hidden deep in their hearts, that they might not sin against you. Now, Lord, be with us here uh, in the time that remains as we would seek, Lord, uh, to consider this question this evening. Grant me help from heaven. Help me, Lord, to preach in the power and demonstration of the Spirit tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. The day they crucified the Lord of glory, Pilate asked the question, and we've read that question twice already, but let's read it a third time. What shall I do then with Jesus, which or who is called Christ? Sadly, the people to whom this question uh, was addressed They all cried in unison. We see it in verse 22 here. Let him be crucified. In fact, they did so. Despite having been exposed to the truth. Now, if I was, or if you were, I should say, if you were to ask yourself that same question this evening, What shall I do with Jesus, which is called Christ? I I wonder what your answer might be. Since you too have been exposed to the truth in this place and elsewhere. In fact, you have been exposed to the truths of the gospel time and and time again here and elsewhere. Well, for a moment or two this evening, I want us to look at that question. 
as you ask yourself that question, what shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? And I want to begin by considering the Christ of the question. The Christ of the question. Now the question here forces us to consider Christ. But who is he? And what do you know about him? Well, a great many things could be said about him. But for the sake of time this evening, I want to restrict myself just to a few thoughts here. And first of all, I want to say that he was a sent Christ. He was a sent Christ. He was sent by his Father in heaven to come into this sin-cursed world 2,000 years ago. To be born as a man, to dwell among sinners, and to die for the sins of men. He was a sent Christ. He was also a submissive Christ. He was submissive to the will of God concerning him in everything. In everything. Even, even when the horrors of the cross loomed before him. And if you were with us on Friday night, we were thinking about that a little bit. How that there in the Garden of Gethsemane, as the horrors of the cross, as he faced the horrors of the cross, he sweat as it were great drops of blood in that garden because of what he was about to face. But he was a submissive Christ. He surrendered to the will of his Father concerning him. Not only was he a sent Christ and a submissive Christ, he was a suffering Christ. He endured unbelievable suffering during his passion. That is, from the, the moment, we might say, he entered into Gethsemane to the moment he died on the cross. He endured unbelievable suffering. Physical, mental, emotional, spiritual suffering. He was also a sacrifice of Christ. Our Passover lamb, as he is called in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7, he was, the Bible says, sacrificed for us, for you, and for me. In fact, his soul was made an offering, an offering for sin, when it was poured out unto, unto death on the cross. And so here as we're thinking about the, the Christ of the question, he was a sent Christ, a submissive Christ, a suffering Christ, a sacrificed Christ, he was also a sinless Christ. Sinless Christ. He was able to be an offering for sin because he was without sin. In fact, he did no sin, he knew no sin because in him is no sin. Christ was a sinless Christ, and because he was sinless, he was able to. To pay the price for our sin. To be that sacrifice for sin. He was also a smitten Christ. The sinless, spotless Lamb of God. He was smitten, the Bible says, by God and afflicted. That is, he was punished. Punished by his Father in heaven. Why? For the sins of the world. And to be personal. For your sin. And for my sin. <clears throat> so that we can become what? The sons of God. Heirs of salvation. 
even joint heirs with Christ himself. He was also a saving Christ. He died for us <laughs> to be the saviour of the world. He is a saving Christ. He has saved, he will save. And he'll save you this evening if you will but call on him. Because he died for the sins of the world. He died to be the saviour of the world. And he's a seeking Christ. A seeking Christ. He told us himself that he came to seek and to save that which was lost. And so during his earthly ministry, he sought out those who were lost that he might save them. And he's still seeking this evening. He's seeking the lost. He's seeking you. Because he knows you're lost. Lost in your sin. Lost in its darkness. Lost in its depravity. He's seeking to save you. To save you from it. He was also a scorned Christ. And he is a, he's a still a, a scorned Christ today. Despite his mission, despite coming to seek in the sea of that which is lost, he is still scorned by many today, even as he was during his earthly ministry, and perhaps more so when he hung on the cross, for we're told that when he hung on the cross, he was reviled. And he was railed on. Scorned by men, and maybe, maybe even scorned by someone here this evening because you see no value in him. So we have the Christ of the question. Secondly, we have the choice of the question. This question also forces us to make a choice a choice as to what we should do with Jesus. Which is or who is called the Christ. A choice that I believe is a personal choice. A present choice. And a present choice. It's a personal choice. For you must decide. You must decide for yourself what you are going to do with Jesus. Just because you're born into a so-called Christian country. And maybe because you've been born into a Christian family. Does not mean that you need, do not need to change, choose, I should say, for yourself. You must personally choose what you're going to do with Jesus. It's a present choice. You're being given another opportunity this evening to be saved. Today, folks, is the day of salvation. It's being offered to you. He's asking you to come. He's pleading with you. Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. It's a present choice. You have an opportunity right now in this place to be saved. And it's a pressing choice because as I've already said, today is the day of salvation, not tomorrow. Because you do not know what tomorrow may bring forth. You don't even know if you will awaken tomorrow morning. You don't know if you'll even see the light of day tomorrow. And so it's a pressing choice. You've got to make your decision today. And so here as we're thinking about this question, we thought about the Christ of the question, the choice of the question. I want to think thirdly here about the complicating of the question. Now the ability to choose wisely. That is, the ability to choose Christ can be complicated for, for several different reasons or factors. First of all, it can be complicated by people. 
It can be complicated by people. You see, we can be influenced as we consider this question. What will I do then with Jesus, which is the Christ? We can be influenced by our family. We can be influenced by our friends. We can be influenced by the foe. Here in this passage, if we had time to look at it, we see that Pilate was influenced by his wife. She basically told Pilate, have nothing to do with that man, Jesus. And that can be the same in our homes. Our partner, whether it be our husband or our wife, they can put us off. Thinking about Jesus, coming to Jesus, trusting in Jesus. And then, of course, we can, we can be uh, influenced by our friends because we fear what they will say. If I become a Christian, what will they say? They'll tease me, they'll mock me, they'll forsake me. Well, folks, if they forsake you, they're not much of friends, are they? And then by the foe, there are enemies. And I'm not talking just about the spiritual at the moment, the content of Satan, but there, there are enemies in this world who oppose the gospel. People who would seek to silence the preaching of the gospel. Uh, we, uh, uh, the, the, the question here can be complicated. Uh, we can be influenced by our family, uh, our friends and our foe. It can be complicated by our prejudices. We can even be influenced by our own preconceived ideas and, uh, and opinions of Christ. Some of us might think he wants to destroy my life. <clears throat> and even of Christianity. It, it can be complicated not just by, by people or by our prejudices, but by our plans. We can be influenced by our plans that we have made. In fact, some of us have mapped out our future. We, we see what we want to do in life. We know how, what we have to do to get there. And that complicates the, the matter, the issue, the question. What shall I do then with Christ? With Jesus who is the Christ. He's going to interfere with my plans. I don't want them. It can be complicated by our proclivity to sin. That is, we are, we are easily influenced by our love for sin. Men love to sin. Men pursue sin. Men practice sin. Men have a passion for sin. And because of that proclivity, then we're not so keen to come to Jesus. And it can be complicated by our perversity, <clears throat> by that rebellious nature within us. We hear our Savior pleading, we hear our Savior beckoning, calling us to come, but we put our foot down and we say, I will not come. <clears throat> and it can be complicated by principalities and powers. We know that there is a spiritual world and Satan and his host will do all that they can to stop you from coming. So here as we think about this question, what shall I do then with Jesus which is the Christ? We thought about the Christ of the question. We thought about the choice of the question. We thought about the complicating of the question. Quickly then, the consequences of the question. What do you do with Jesus, who is called the Christ, will determine, among other things, where you spend eternity. If you receive him, in repentance and faith. You will live forever with him in heaven. 
with the redeemed from all the ages. If you reject him, you will spend eternity forever separated from him in hell. <coughs> and then as I finish one more little thought, I want to consider the changing of the question. If we were to change that question just for a moment or two, of course the question that we've been thinking about here is, what shall I do then with Jesus, which is the Christ? If we were to change that question to, what will Jesus do with me? What do you think he'll do with you if you reject him? <coughs> Well, what do you think he will do with you if you say no to him? What do you think he will do with you if you die in your sin? Well, that question has already been answered, but let me elaborate on it just for a moment or two. For the sinner, the sinner needs to understand that there is a day coming. When he will summon the sinner to stand before him at the great white throne judgment. Where he will judge him, where he will judge her for their sin. Before casting them into hell or specifically the lake of fire. In fact there is a day coming when when the Christ rejecter will get what he deserves, what she deserves, because God in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ will judge them. Judge them according to their works. Every evil thought, every sinful word, every wicked deed. And the light, of course, that they reject it. So this evening, I want you to ask yourself that question. What shall I do then with, Christ, with Jesus who is called the Christ? What will you do? Remember, whatever you do, it will do. It will determine your eternal destiny. If you reject him, he will reject you and cast you out of his sight and down into hell in eternity. But if you receive him, he will receive you and you will spend eternity with him in glory. So answer that question carefully. What shall I do? Not the person beside you. Not the person in front of you. Or behind you. But what shall I do with Jesus, which is called the Christ? You need to answer that question if you haven't already. Time's gone, folks. We're going to turn to our closing hymn. 311 in Songs of Victory. If you're using the hymn book, otherwise the words again will be projected above my head here. Jesus, my Savior, to Bethlehem came. Born in a manger to sorrow and shame. Oh, it was wonderful, blessed be his name. Seeking for me, for me. He's still seeking for you tonight. He knows where you are. He knows that you need him. But do you know that you need him? Let's stand to sing 311, please.
our Father in heaven. Lord, if nothing else can be remembered or recalled this evening, uh, Lord, we pray that you would impress that question upon every heart uh, and every mind, Lord, and every soul. What shall I do then with Jesus, which is the Christ? Lord, we need to answer that question. and We need to answer it wisely. We pray that, Lord, there would be none who would reject him, but rather, Lord, we pray that all would receive him, that they would know their sins forgiven, and that, Lord, they're going to heaven, that even on this Resurrection Sunday, they might be able to look back and say it was on that day, that day that I put my faith in Christ. It was that day that I was saved. It was that day that I was born again of the Spirit. It was that day that I knew. I knew in my soul that I was saved. Father, we pray, impress your word upon every heart here tonight. In Jesus' name, amen.